we push ourselves to limits so we tend to get injured. And I was one of those unlucky dancers that got seriously injured. I have had a prolapsed disc, which did not recover after a year of rest, and I eventually had to have the surgery. I have seen many people before me fail to come back after surgeries. I have been told by doctors that you are not going to be able to dance at the level you were, that you're not going to be work as many hours as you were before, um, that you have to cut down on work. and. To me, that was just, I might as well stop dancing. Every dancer will have experienced some kind of injury. Um, and a fair number of dancers will have experienced a major injury. My problem was a um, stress fracture at the shin bone. I um, tore my medial meniscus in my right knee. I was at a point where I was investigating um, knee replacements, actually, and I thought I'd have to, uh, you know, basically retire. I actually have a metal rod uh, which has been inserted inside my shin bone. had 14 screws, two plates, two wires put in um, and was very much faced with the reality of a not dancing but more importantly not even walking normally again. 80% of dancers suffered a severe injury during their career. Half of them, 47 to even 60%, suffer a chronic injury, meaning this injury is lasting for a long period of time, eventually for their lifetime. A lot of dancers that I know in the past have had major operations after they've finished dancing and really found it a struggle. As a sports scientist, you look at um, at different measures with different tools and figure out what is the history of an injury, how does it occur and how can we prevent that, how can we take that away from the performance and allow dancers to perform in a safer way. Working with Patrick as soon as I could put any weight through my foot at all to go from that point back to the stage. It sounds kind of crazy, but it was the first rehab that I had done that was very structured and very um, clearly defined and laid out. Sports science is like uh, the secret weapon that we didn't know we had. After a year of being off, it only took me five days of rehearsals before I went on stage. The work I did with Patrick made all the difference uh, to uh, the way I could come back, the, uh, the way I felt, confidence, um, and also the speed of my recovery. Patrick came and, I, and he said, you know, squat down or do a few things. And he looked at me and said, oh, okay, I know what the problem is. With Bill, what happened um, was incredible and and also, myself, I experienced a very quick change. Patrick had really specific exercise that helped me find the good way. I have uh, heard um, how much uh, Alina found it beneficial for her. And I have seen it as well. I have seen the progression that uh, people that were working with her were doing. It was clear in class, it was clear in the way they were dancing. So I decided to start working with him as well. It's not too bad, we've seen worse. I think you have the range, and we can see it here even. The role of the sports scientist has just come into our world in the last, um, say, four years. We had never really had anybody like that within the Royal Ballet. It's actually sports sciences, so it's a collection of different sciences looking at sports or at movement in general. So it's, like, for example, biomechanics, which is kind of like physics for the body. It's anatomy, physiology, it's about training science, movement and exercise science, uh, f uh, psychology, nutrition, and all these different sciences really focusing on the execution of movement, of sports, of performance. It's expert. That's the biggest issue, is that it's expert. It's not sort of, you know, or it's not, well, uh, I believe. It's not I believe, it's I know. You know, this is just science.
it has been well established in, in the areas of sporting prowess for quite some time. However, I think it's quite new in terms of the world of dance. For a long time it was seen uh, dance and the arts were one thing, sport was another. And I think it's only in the last few years that we've realised there's a lot of, that we can learn from sport. In the assessment, we basically look at having baseline measures. So tell me, are you ready? Yes. And then at a point where, for example, there is an injury, we know exactly to which base we want to get back after the injury. So if the jump was 50 centimeters before, we want to get back to 50 after the injury process. We can use equipment with slow motion cameras and uh, lasers on either side that detected dancers jump and the action time on the floor and how high they jump. On the screen as well you can see how the, how the feet are moving, how the knees are moving. So landing wise we're p pretty flat now. No, still up. Uh, probably your foot is like collapsing in there. You have more mm. flexion in that knee that you can see. But at the same time, yeah, here's the rolling is happening. And that way we have a very um, organized process of the rehab. And that helps the dancer to understand and also to not fear when they come back and not experimenting with maybe going on stage and then immediately suffering another injury. A young man that was uh, at the school and who I had given a contract to and then had to have quite a major operation and working very closely with Patrick, he's, he's really come back stronger than he would have done if none of this had happened and uh, come back in such a way that he really feels confident about starting company life, which he's doing this week, which I'm very pleased about. Good, Matthew. Keep going. Bam, bam, ba -da -dum, dun, da -dum. He finds the weak link in, in the way you move in, and, um, and that eventually, especially if it's caught early on, can uh, prevent so much. I am sure a lot of my injuries that had came across my career would have most likely not happened. It can help you greatly, not just when you're recovering from an injury, but just as an everyday uh, kind of training. I don't know if I can press that. Don't, no, don't. Just keep it. Both to prevent injuries, but I actually believe that he helps you to get better and to dance better on stage. If the conductor decides to take his time one night, oh, you have to stay in the air longer. Well, in that case, if you've been working with Patrick, it's actually kind of fun, and you're going, I wonder what's going to happen, as opposed to going, oh, dear Lord, please help me because I don't have the strength and I can't stay up in the air that long. With this kind of training, you dance longer, you are stronger, so you can concentrate more um, on the artistic point. With strength comes control. With control comes freedom. With freedom, freedom comes, comes enjoyment. So overall, it's a win-win situation. The people who do it rigorously, who stay with it, um, all dance better. All of them. Yes, good. Hold it, hold it, hold it. It's just about this, this angle that you can lift high, then from there, bah, get speed without having a big uh, way to accelerate. From here, it's easy, you have a big range, right? Whereas from here, it's difficult, but to get that speed, you need to straighten that leg here, right? So coming down, sorry, whoops, and bah. What's wonderful about Patrick is um, as he's, he's been asking me to do things, he was explaining why. And though he was explaining in his scientific way, um, he was explaining so that I understood it. It can be intimidating because he's so skilled physically. But on the other hand, it's very inspiring because you think, well, why not me too? <laughs> you know? My body had experience with performance, with high level performance, with a lot of like stress on the body. I never suffered an injury because of doing things properly. And that I want to bring to dancers as well. The fact that he comes from martial arts is already a good beginning. I mean, martial arts and ballet have a lot more in common than people might realize in terms of the need for uh, flexibility and strength, and also the need for, um, let's say, attention to detail. 
you know, all those things are equally important in ballet as they are in martial arts. So that's already a good start. But also it's someone that has gone out of his way to learn. I mean, Patrick is always watching classes, watching performances. He knows the steps now, by now. He asks what he doesn't know. He's not ashamed of learning. And so by now, the truth is he knows a lot about our art form too. Patrick has um, a great eye, actually, for seeing what, uh, what you need to, to improve your technical into ballet. He can actually look at you and really help you in, in what you need. He can spot um, the direction that you can work towards and make a real difference. When a dancer starts working with Patrick, you can see that suddenly their power increases, their stamina increases, their resistance increases, their flexibility increases. He's just giving uh, everything he knows and he tried on himself um, to, to help dancers. Arch first. Upper back is rounded, comes up. Dancers nowadays tend to dance longer. Like someone like myself, who's in mid-60s, uh, I've got to get up and show stuff. So how are you going to do that? Hmm, this is a good way. Yeah, It's not going to knock you out, but it's going to keep you going. Long-term benefits for the Forsyth Company is that dancers will be able to dance longer. And the more the dancer works with you, the more they know how you work, how to work within the, the repertory, how to create. They become simply more experienced. And, but if they have to leave because of injury, you've lost a whole chunk of invested time. We measure before they work out with us. Uh, uh, and afterwards, and some improve by 25%, some by 30%. That's very individual. Yeah. Sure. We're hungry at the Royal Ballet to really have as much knowledge as possible about the body, about how it works, about how to get the peak performance from all of our dancers. We have a completely different setup. It's way as many more dancers, like five times roughly the number of dancers that we have to look at. And we needed to find different strategies because of their scheduling. When you have to do something classical and then something modern comes into the rap and you have a week, two weeks to put it together, it's a very big shock to the system because you suddenly go to extreme positions that the body hasn't been there for a long time. If we can apply the advances that have been made in sports science to the ballet class and to uh, the whole structure of the ballet system. In, then out, in, out, in, okay. out, in. We will end up with stronger, healthier dancers, less prone to injury. Even coming back from a rehab, one could argue that people come back better and stronger than they were before the injury. Boom. Yes, very good. Boom, fire. Boom, good. It's been very helpful um, in a lot of ways. Boom. Yes, very good. Building strength, explosiveness, control. There's lots of benefits that are quite clear, but I'm still working my way back onto the stage at this point. <laughs> I dance well when I'm really in shape, and I used to get in shape by jumping. Coming back from this injury, I couldn't jump as much as I used to, and so I couldn't get in shape what I do with Patrick really made a difference with my muscles are getting stronger without putting stress on the shin. So all the impact that you get every time you jump is taken out of the equation. This is something that I'm very keen on that we, we have healthy people walking out of this company. We actually started building up a team. So now at the English National Ballet, Tamara starts working with Frank, who is a sports scientist as well. And that way we can make sure we have the service in several places. Push. At least four mornings a week. I train with Frank Apple. I try and um, train different things depending on the repertoire. When I became uh, director of English National Ballet a year ago, one of the things that I really wanted to improve was the support uh, from the medical and, and the rehabilitation um, area of things for dancers. Right now we're doing really high demand ballets like Corsair for the men, it's all acrobatics, it's all jumps. And we see that they are sustaining their physical abilities and they're not getting injured. So hopefully in a year or two we will be able to see a very clear 
quantifiable evidence of this investment. What I like about Frank and Patrick especially is that um, what they teach me is scientific. They are facts and figures and they share them with me in a way that I can also monitor myself. Um, I come back from an injury, I know exactly at what level of my fitness I'm. Uh, I know exactly at what level of ability I am. I know how much I have to push. I know how much I have to improve. I'm also able to know when I'm fatigued because I have worked too much and when I have to slow down. Right. All that objective information, I think, is really valuable for a professional ballet dancer. I would like to incorporate sports science and sports medicine ideas strongly into the performance world because it's often seen as a nice add-on or is not used at all and I think you can see in the sports world that there's a very strategic process of utilizing that which leads to, to a lot of success. What I love about Patrick is his passion um, and I think that's how he's managed to convince us all in the world of dance because we are all passionate about dance and very rarely we find people that are equally passionate about their own speciality. And he is. He's completely obsessed. I believe that if a dancer has full control over his or her body, uh, with uh, at the same time reducing the risk to get injured, he or she will more rely on it and be able to express more open and in more different ways what he or she wants to express which might lead to a different level of art. That generosity and that um, single-minded passion um, is something that we, we as dancers and as artists could recognize and that has helped him become one of the people that we really love and treasure. If we can lead the way to, for other companies to see, oh, that's, that's obviously doing them a lot of good. It's making the dancers feel fitter, happier, Long, maybe longer careers, then I think that would be uh, a goal achieved, really. What Patrick does could work with all the companies because in the body world, it's what I like. It's that we have the same language in every country. I think that sports science would be a tremendous help to our profession. I think from in, in every facet. It would be great. Smarter dancers are smarter dancers, period. Dancers that dance longer are more experienced dancers. Um, young dancers who start with it have much brighter futures. I think that this is something that should be in every national ballet school. I think it will really benefit the dancers to have this knowledge earlier on because for me it came almost at the end of my career and I wish someone had given me these tools when I was 20 years old or even better when I was 11. If young dancers can be assessed at an early age then any potential issues that 10 years down the line might really develop into something career threatening that can be addressed early on things can be done and incorporated into their work that will help them overcome those issues potentially and just be stronger, healthier dancers and hopefully not have to live with the effects post-ballet of carrying uh, an injury. The enjoyment of dancers is going to be so much higher and the competition for me will going to be so much bigger. <laughs> I've tried it on, on my body and I think it works. So, and I've, um, you know, I really get the benefits, so I would invite everybody else to give it a go. I, I just wish there were more Patricks. That, that, we want to clone him. That's the biggest issue, is now getting permission to clone Patrick. To be on stage and not feel pain, it's, or to be in a studio and not feel pain, it's a wonderful, wonderful miracle. And in the past five years, I have had uh, a lot more of this miracle than I have had before. I'll be always grateful. Cause, uh... That's kind of uh, the most uh, important thing for me now. So thanks, Patrick. Mm -hmm.